Hey, Battle Bill here with another video. Getting some more Season 12 Go Battle League battles. These taking place in the Ultra League Premier meta. And today's video, we are going to answer the question Is Ursaluna C Day and building an Ursaluna for either Ultra League, Great League, or Master League worth the investment? Shout out to Smudgy B, our friend from the other side of the world, for this submission of the content. As you'll notice, Ursaluna is just being introduced into Pokemon Go through the Teddy Ursa Community Day. So between two to five local time, and then for some additional hours after, because I think Ursaluna has some sort of feature where it involves it at nighttime specifically. So I think you have until like nine o'clock your time or 10 o'clock your time. Don't quote me exactly, but around then in the evening, you have the opportunity to evolve an Ursa Ring into Ursaluna to receive the Community Day charge move and brand new move introduced into the game of high horsepower. Now. The question is, is Ursaluna still usable or did Niantic ruin our boy by giving it tackle as a fast move when it had access to Shadow Claw and they should have given it Shadow Claw because it just would have made it a very meta relevant mod. It would not have destroyed the meta and just would have had a nice satisfying usable place in the meta if it was given access to Shadow Claw as a fast move instead of tackle. Now. The question that we have to answer is it still usable with tackle and we're going to find out through smudgy b's battles that he submitted to the channel the rest of the move set that uh ursaluna is running is another charge move of thunder punch it also gets access to fire punch and one other move that i cannot remember off the top of my head neither of which you want to be running you definitely want this move set on your ursalunas if you're trying to run it to have maximum success in the go battle league so getting to this match you'll notice that smudgy is getting to a charge move a high horsepower on his ursaluna which does take out that sand slash's remaining health and practically one shots but then again it's super effective damage so it makes sense that it would the polyrath is getting to a charge move here gonna be a skull it's gonna do super effective effective damage take out the ursaluna and the trevenant is going to get to a charge move being a seed bomb and is going to almost take out the polyrats remaining health but then the next shadow claw gets it done as you'll notice high horsepower is a 60 energy charge move that either deals 100 or 110 damage around that around that realm again don't call me right off the bat but it's a makeup of that kind of charge move it will take quite a bit of time to get there but thankful to the tackle buff that occurred in this recent go battle league season it will get there at a more reasonable pace than it would have in the past if it was given tackle during you know any other season as its only charge move okay into this next matchup we have a trevenant on an empoleon lead ends up throwing the charge move swapping to the obstacle to catch a drill pack on his obstacle they then match with a kingdra so now he's going to throw night slashes at the kingdra he's going to want to spam them before the kingdra has the opportunity to either octazuka or outrage this charge move coming through should only be an octazuka it will not take oh it is a whole outrage it will take the obstacle's remaining health out my fault it happened so fast because the battles are sped up it was quite hard to tell the trevenant is going to come back in he's going to over farm he's going to go for a seed bomb this will not take out the king remaining health it will get it quite low oh it did take it out back to back times battle bill you know nothing about what you're talking about quality commentating look listen i swear that just barely took it out regardless a, the opponent brings in a dragonite he builds all the way up to the shadow ball they see him p time he's going to commit the shield to keep his trevenant alive to get this shadow ball off Surely will swap out of this and go into the Earth Luna after, and that's exactly what he's going to do. The tackles are at least chunking and adding up against the Dragonite. Also, to quote, tackle due to its recent buff is a lick clone just of the normal typing so as you'll notice it is slowly chipping away at thunder punch added up nicely ursaluna is practically dead decides to not commit the shield to the ursaluna decides to oh leave it unshielded to get waterfall down by the empoleon but the trevenant is just barely alive and is able to shadow claw back shadow claw down both the dragonite and the empoleon there i wonder if he commits a shield to the dragon claw there if the empoleon was even at a charge move and he probably would have been able to win it that way also and to the next matchup we have a trevenant on a glade lead it is a positive lead for him the opponent swaps immediately he matches that swap immediately with his obstagoon i was wondering if maybe ursaluna would be a pretty good pick here just because of thunder punch but at the same time it is running a fast move tackle that is going to only deal resisted damage so we'll see how this matchup plays out i'm sure obstagoon plays this pretty well in ultra league considering it doesn't play it too bad in master league i mean great league yeah master league's for sure battle build doesn't play it that bad in great league 
So in Ultra League, where it st obstacle stacks up even better against Skarmory, I'm sure this matchup will go well for it. Shields of Sky Attack there. They're in the even shielding scenario. Going for a Night Slash will not do the remaining health of the Skarmory, but could potentially counter down. The Apollyon then swaps back out into their Gallade. So he's able to keep a very strong alignment here. Charge move from Gallade coming through should be resisted by the Trevenant. Ends up being a lead played. Could have either been that or the close combat. Ends up building up to a Shadow Ball and throwing the Seed Bomb. Does not do the remaining health of the glade but is going to commit to a shadow claw down to get some additional farm very well done the opponent then comes in with an altaria it's like they're trying to run a great league team here in ultra league then again how many people are really running glade in great league this isn't exactly low power cup but still the combination of altaria and skarmory is quite one to see now can ursaluna with one shield pop off on the opponent's remaining back line unfortunately Ursaluna did not get access to Ice Punch, and the opponent makes a great play to catch the Thunder Punch on their Skarmory. They, this, he, Smudgy decides to undercharge it, but and it ends up barely not taking out. He's able to tackle down. The Altaria comes back in. It's going to be a race between the tackle fast move damage and the Thunder Punch damage. How much will this deal to the Altaria? It's only neutral damage. This is a nice spot where Ice Punch, when it came in clutch for the Ursa Luna, does not take out. Smudgy recognizes this, makes a heads up play and the heads up swap to go to Obstagoon, build up to the Night Slash, get the BM boost and still take out the Altera for GG's. But as you'll notice, as much as Tackle isn't doing a terrible amount of damage as fast move pressure, it's just not generating energy well enough to build up to high horsepowers and thunder punches consistently to potentially play a bait game. I feel like Ursaluna loses a lot of strong matchups that it would have had with Shadow Claw, whether it had been in the Master League, in this Ultra Premier meta, or even in the Great League, even though Ursaluna's stat proc is quite high. I don't know how well it would have still performed in Great League because of that, uh, downsizing it to 1500 CP. But regardless, it would have been so much better off with Shadow Claw. Here, it seems like it's relatively usable, but I think at best it's a spice pick that you could try to use to have fun have fun and try to have success at the same time it's not completely irrelevant but it's definitely not going to be mainstay meta either of course iantic had to massacre our boy hopefully there will be some future event that gives ursa luna shadow claw or maybe they'll be like you know what the season ends in 19 days we made a mistake we effed up let's uh give ursa luna shadow claw to start the next go battle league season but then again niantic has a strong ego when it comes to these things and they suffer to and they struggle to admit when they've uh done things incorrectly so hopefully they will at least recognize but if they would have they were going to recognize the time to fix it would have literally been right before the community did. they had plenty of time the community was all over them on twitter you know you just would have loved and wished that they would have recognized their mistake and fix it but regardless yo ursaluna scares away gengars but i mean no duh after obstacle practically swept that opponent's entire back line and then you bring in the ursaluna which is a ground normal type i did not mention that i mentioned as many things as i possibly could about ursaluna as we started this video but it's also not just a pure ground typing it also has a normal typing which can be good and bad at the same time because of the fact that it'll resist ghost but then do terribly against uh fighting now getting into this next matchup this is something this is a matchup that ursa luna should win comfortably even with shadow claw being resisted by the little muck because it'd be able to spam the heck out of high horsepowers instead ursa luna is forced to bait a thunder punch here just so it could save some residual energy and get to a high horsepower, hopefully, before this muck starts spamming off dark pulses. The one positive here, at the very least, is just the pure fact that um, it can tank a dark pulse, whereas the Lola muck is quite scared of a high horsepower. And even then, honestly, Thunder Punch might have just been the play with the amount of damage that the tackles have done to add up and clunk at the Alolan muck. Is it even? Is there even a point to throw the high high horsepower at the Alolan muck at that point? With all the tackles and the Thunder Punch, it may not take it out completely. Would probably would have gotten the Alolan muck low enough, but at least. The opponent makes a play there, swapping the Swampert, and we get off that additional energy. And that bait game and shield game was worth it. But that just took so much finesse. Whereas without tackle, it wouldn't have required as much finesse. And it would have had a nice, comfortable matchup there to keep alignment, slaughter the muck, and then potentially deal some extra damage to the Swampert later on. But regardless, we're able to bring in the Obstagoon, almost counter down the muck. And the opponent had one other Mon, which I don't think performed well against our lead. So it ends up being GG's for that match there. 
getting into this next one we have a trev on wall rain lead not the most ideal lead in the world it's better in great league now because of the ice spear nerf but in ultra league wall rain still comfortably wins this because wall rain can tank a seed bomb whereas trevenant cannot tank an ice spear so smudgy makes a swap to catch an ice spear on his obstagoon it's going to do a little bit of chip damage. The opponent's then going to match his obstacle with a Needle Queen. He's going to spam Night Slashes in hopes to get the boost because this is not going to be a positive matchup for the obstacle to be in. Poison Fang is coming through, going to debuff the obstacle's remaining or its health and do a good a little chunk of its remaining health. I meant to say debuff its defense. I guess technically lowering health would be debuffing itself. Lamel. Either way, two Poison Fangs come through. He's going off another Night Slash. As you notice, this is not doing enough chip damage, and the Obstagoon is not boosting. So he's going to end up getting jabbed all the way down before he can get to another Night Slash. Now the question becomes, do you come in with Trev to try and Shadow Claw down, or do you resist a bunch of damage with Ursaluna and tackle down? The opponent then recognizes the situation and decides to swap into Dragonite. Honestly, the least Niantic could have done if they were going to force us to have tackle on this Ursaluna was give us Ice Punch here. Ice Punch would have, like... Uh, would have performed so much better in these specific types of situations where there's literally dragon slash dragon flyers everywhere. Instead, Ursaluna just gets massacred there by Dragon Breath, by the Dragonite, and essentially this match is GG's. So overall, I showed you a collection of battles here, most of which uh, the Ursaluna was able to win because I want to show you some of its features and highlights, but this last match is a real pure representation of how Ursaluna is going to perform in most PvP metas, in most Go Battle League settings, and unfortunately, it's just going to be underwhelming with Tackle. So hopefully, Niantic fixes this mistake and it gives it Shadow Claw at some point in the future. But, you know, ego in the way, I doubt we'll see the day. Bars. Unfortunately. You know what? Thankfully, Ursaluna Day is still triple Stardust. But on that note, let me know your thoughts on my opinions about Ursaluna. Let me know your thoughts on Ursaluna. Are you going to grind it? Are you going to try to use it in PvP? Overall, Smudgy B, thank you so much for the submission. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you're still able to get your Great League, Ultra League, and Master League IVs of Ursaluna because you never know. Hopefully, it'll be given a move update because, I mean, like, the, the Pokemon just came out and we already need it to be fixed. Great work, Niantic. Classic stuff. All right. I'll see you all in the next video. Preach!